Okay, so this is the second installation in our series of how we build a course. Uh, soon after the previous video, I jumped on a Zoom call with a young man, nine-year-old uh, in the UK named Maxi. And Maxi and I got into discussion. He uh, clearly felt comfortable enough to share uh, a substantial amount about his dyslexic experience, including a very disheartening story about a, an assignment that he had written four times and on the final submission, his teacher crumpled it up, threw it in the garbage and said, this is trash. To feel that, to hear that from him and to remember what that feels like is putting me in a place where I can start to create a course that will keep his sensitivities and his vulnerabilities in the forefront of my mind because I need to address those in order to establish that as a teacher, I understand what kids his age are going through and only when they feel understood am I able to provide them with a message of hope that things will and do get better. So uh, after, after the call, I received a poem, which I'm gonna share uh, by Maxi, and it solidified my instinct that this young man would be an extraordinary collaborator in the creative process. And I have followed up subsequently with the parents and asked if we could, Maxi and I, uh, could schedule a few more conversations on Zoom to flesh out the ideas that I'm putting into this course. Uh, luckily, they thought that that would be uh, beneficial to Maxi and, and supportive of noticeability. So we will continue to do that. Um, and granted, we have sort of a template that we're working off of for this course that was created by our partners in the Netherlands, the Hoy Foundation. So um, you know, my method is clearly dyslexic. It is, uh, it's obviously intuitive and based on sort of circumstance, uh, having yet met this young man and being able to incorporate his input, I think is, um, is both valuable in, in, in sort of a pedagog pedagogical, pedagogical, you know, the word I'm looking for, uh, from that perspective, as well as from sort of an emotional perspective for me to be able to convey with authenticity what I'm trying to teach to these students um, and, and, and have them receptive, uh, I think that's critical. So phase two, and uh, I'll keep you updated.